Welcome YouTubers. Today we'll make another distressed wood beach art cookie. This one will have a lot of chocolate made out of shells. Made into shells, excuse me. There's a starfish, a couple of different ways, the conch. And I don't know what they're all called actually. And this is where I'm using just the regular white modeling chocolate. I don't want the bright because I'm going to put color. And the seashell has a little bit of a tinge to it, so this white does too. And here I'm just going to roll it out. Okay, I'm going to get one end skinnier than the other. I'm going to put a hole in the very end. Now I'm going to start at the small end and just roll it up. And there you go. I'll, you can open up that end a little bit if it, if it smashed close. And just let that harden. And now we'll do the conch. The conch is very easy. It's one of my favorite ones to do. Start out with uh, a teardrop looking piece of dough. So then you open that end up there too. Now I'll just kind of flatten the side. You want it really thin because you're going to roll it. And there you go. It's done. You can curve it any shape you want. And now we'll do the starfish. Just pinch the ends and you can actually use a star cutter and then just shape it from there but I couldn't find my star cutter, so I'm doing it the hard way and sculpting it. You, know, and you can use a paintbrush to get in those little corners. You know, and just kind of smooth out your legs. You don't want to work with it too much if it feels like it's getting really um, soft. Put it down and let it harden up a little bit. And once again, you don't want these to be perfect. And I'm gonna, sh we're gonna kind of do like the front of one and the back of one because both sides have a unique look to them. So that's why I'm making two here. And there we go. Shape it any way you'd like. Moving on to the next one for now, just because I want that to um, harden up a little bit, and it just takes a minute. And these are the smaller ones. This is the back side, but um, this is the side that looks like it's slit open on each little arm. So that's what I'm trying to recreate here. If you want it to firm up a little bit before you do that, or it just flattens. And now I have a pen that I only use in food, and you take the, the ink part out so that you just have the shell. And that gives you your unique little shape of the little round circles that you see on starfish too. That works for a lot of things, so keep a pen in your toolbox. Okay, there you have it. I'm using rose gold luster dust and pearl luster dust. I'm just going to kind of put the both of them on, mix them up. 
And as you see over there, I had some little, I made some little sugar pearls too. I'm not sure if I filmed that or not, but I put those in there and colored them too. And oh, here we go. Here's the sugar pearls. These are the kind of sugar pearls that don't break your teeth. And there I'm putting just the pearl on them. I have rows on the other side. These are just the pearl. Now if you want these bright white, you can do them bright white. They do look pretty, the pearl part does. And now just start going over all your shells with the color you like. I do like using these luster dusts, dusts because they are so shiny and pretty, glimmery. I'm going to try to get it a little bit darker inside that slip part we made. And here we're going to make, put the crackle effect onto the cookie before we bake it. I use Americolor gels. I use the white and the turquoise and the, uh, not brown, ivory. I couldn't find a brown that I liked, so ivory was the perfect brown in its gel form. And just paint the white on. Now make sure once you get it all covered that you use your brush to make the a whole sweep of the cookie and not leave any lines. Don't lift up from one side to the next for your final. And I use the turquoise to represent the water. Now here's the frosting sheets that I use. And you can, I have this little handy dandy mold and I don't remember where I got it, but it's little hearts, but it looks like net. So it makes a cute net, and then I'll also, also show you the burlap mold to make your netting. And you want to cut these frosting sheets up in little squares, pull the back off. And uh, you just dip it in water and lay it on your mold. And it quickly starts dissolving. And once it starts dissolving, you take your little scraper and start smoothing it over to get it in all the cracks. And I get these sheets from uh, a YouTube creator. She had um, it's called My Little Bakery. She has a YouTube channel and she has an Etsy shop and she sells all these neat little tools, these frosting sheets, um, the molds, all kinds of stuff. You should check her out.
Now here, I wanted some brown netting. And you see, I kind of tore this too, but I put cocoa, I painted it into my mold before I put my fabric flex in. And it gave me just the netting color that I wanted. And here's a bonus video. This is a picture of a pastillage mold. And I'm going to show you how to make pastillage because you can make so many things with it. It's like gum paste, but it hardens very fast, way quicker than gum paste. It is very strong. I make bowls, I can make cups, and you could literally use them because this stuff is so strong. So I will show you how to make that in this uh, little bonus video. So stay tuned. And I'm just going to add water, gelatin, and glucose. And you can use Cairo instead of if you don't have any glucose. Glucose is much stronger and it's better to use. So you'll want to use less Cairo because it's um, thinner than glucose. And just mix those all together. It's hard to get the glucose out of the bowl because it's so tough and then pop those in the microwave for about a minute and stir it up the exact measurements are on the patreon site okay, I'm just going to use domino sugar and I get the boxes it's already pre-measured one box you don't have to sift it or anything like that and just put that in my mixer and I'm using my little baby KitchenAid and I, with the dough hook and just make a little well in your powdered sugar and then pour your heated mixture into that and then you just turn your mixer on low until that all mixes together and then you just want to keep on mixing it. As you, as it combines, you can turn your mixer up faster. And once it's all combined, you want to just keep mixing that till it turns into a dough and starts creeping up your hook. want to knead that a little bit and I have that vegetable oil spray and I'll usually um, spray a little bit of that too to work it in uh, before I store it and you store it just like you do gum paste you can in here you can see the pliability of it okay and I just store it in a bag and then I usually put that bag either in a bowl that has a, a lid, airtight lid, or a Ziploc bag is fine too. And I don't put this in the refrigerator or freezer. I usually don't keep it that long. To use it, here I've already conditioned it, but take out uh, the amount that you want to use and you put that in another bag 
unless you're going to use the whole bag that you're using but put it in the microwave at five second intervals this stuff quicks up, um, heats up really quick don't go more than four or five seconds at a time and usually I'll do that twice for a good size piece and then it makes it really soft so you can work with it and you can use and use vegetable oil to work with um, here I'm rolling it out because I'm going to make a mold of some shells okay and then I have a collection of little shells there um, I put a little bit of vegetable oil on the plate so I can dip my finger in that and put that on each shell and just press it down and that way the dough won't stick to the shell and you can pull it right back up and you have to work pretty quick this stuff dries fast I'm telling you And you can make a mold of just about anything. I have made huge molds. I make molds of bowls and stuff like that. In one of my upcoming videos, I will have a bowl that looks like a shell because I'm going to put sand in it and put cookies in that. And the the bo the shell bowl made from the pastillage is literally going to be my cake board. And here I'm using the mold. I let this set a few days. You can start using it after you feel that it's hardened up. And it's not flexible, so it's not going to be like one of those molds where, you know, you can bend it to pop out your piece. So what you'll have to do is I pop mine in the freezer for a couple of minutes. And then I take some sort of tool and just, you know, pop them out because the... Uh, you're only going to want that one side to look good. You may leave a hole in the other side from popping it out, but you, you can also um, smooth that out with your fingers. Here I'm distressing the wood with my little tiny mini miter or grater. I want to put some marks and divots in it so that it looks old. Now we'll add the net, and I'm just going to put that on with royal icing, and I'm just going to kind of ruffle it up here and there so it looks like it's, you know, sloppy looking. And now we'll add the shells with royal icing also. And there you have it. 